very hearty good day to everyone there and welcome to this golf ticket presents cape town club cricket league t10 competition here in the wonderful city of cape town we're busy with match number 10 and that's going to be between northern's Goodwood cricket club sponsored by tars 777 they up against Durbanville cricket club sponsored by world 777 conditions are a lot cooler than what we've had over the past few days we've had overnight rain but we've had the toss and we've had the pitch report earlier. Let's go over and see what the outcomes of those were. T10 competition here in Cape Town. We're busy going to be busy with match number 10 here on day six of this tournament. And what a tournament it has been. Conditions today here is a lot cooler again than what we've had. We've had overnight rain, but thanks to the groundsman, we've got dry conditions here. And that's going to allow us to have... Hopefully a great game of cricket ahead of us. As we look to this pitch, this pitch hasn't changed from what we've seen throughout this competition, especially for the morning game. There's going to be a little bit of movement for the bowlers up front, as we've seen all week long. However, or do you want to bowl with a wet ball? Because the outfield is a little bit moist with some dew and possibly still wet from the rain that we've had last, last night. But interesting for me is going to be what the teams are going to do. Do you want to bowl with a wet ball? Or do you want to take it by the scruff of the neck and try and bat first here today? Let's go over to the toss and find out. Good morning and welcome here to the toss of this golf. Ticket presents Cape Town Club Cricket League T10 match. We're busy with match number 10 and that match is between Northern's Goodwood in yellow, sponsored by Tars 777. And they'll be up against the home side here, Durbanville Cricket Club, sponsored by World 777. Durbanville Cricket Club, they top of the log. Northern's, get good, Northern's good today at the bottom. So it's top v bottom here. Still a lot to play for in this one. So we're going to go over the toss. It's going to be Eric, the shuffler, Osner. He's going to do the toss. It's going to be Ruben to call. Tails, Tails is a call. That's a head. That's a head. So, Eric, if you just come to me, Eric, here. You've won the toss, Eric. What have you decided to do? Um, we're going to have a ball first. What's your thoughts on that? You've just stick to what everybody else has done. Everybody has won the toss. They've come and bowled. Um, so, yeah, we think the field's going to be a bit slower and uh, it's a little bit tougher to bat in the morning. Uh, so that's our thought process to bowl first. I know you guys find yourself at the bottom of the table, but there's still a lot of, lot of cricket to be played and you can still find yourself up there in the playoff position. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think our combinations haven't been right, um, but we're trying a few new things today, and hopefully we can pull off a David and Goliath. You said the combinations haven't been right. You're the captain for today. We've had a, we had someone else captain, so hopefully you bring uh, you brought a little bit of a surprise package to that as well. Um, yeah, so Ambrose was always going to be our captain, but he's not available today, and I was um, vice captain. Wasn't supposed to captain, but he's not <laughs> yet, so just filling in. Yeah. Any changes to your team? Um, yes, we've got a few changes. Um, we've got Ryan Capes coming in, um, and we've also got Ezra Brinsley. That's what, in the what do they do? Um, Ryan Capes is more of an all-rounder, um, and Izzy's one of our big hitters. Big hitter, so we can expect a lot of hits? Ah, definitely. <laughs> Listen, go well today. Thank you very much. Cheers. Ruben, if you had to win the toss, what would you have done? Uh, we would have batted first anyway, so not too dissatisfied with the toss. So you're getting to do what you wanted to do then? Yeah, uh, I think with the pitch, uh, is, the pitch is quite hard and the outfield is still a little bit wet. So I think that's going to negate a lot of the swing and the seam off the wicket. So it looks like a good wicket to bat first on. Just looking at the way you guys go about your business, you've got a well-balanced team with both bat and ball. Certainly the conditions here might also favor, favor, favor you guys as well. Yeah, I think batting first also gives both our batting and bowling lineup the opportunity to express themselves and use all the overs that are there at their disposal. So... I think it'll make for a good game of cricket. Any changes to your side? Uh, we've got Eddie Skitter coming in today, another spinner. Um, the spinner has been se seeming, seemingly doing well for us throughout the tournament. So yeah, Eddie Skitter coming in for Ethan Kutsia. Okay, Go well again today. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's the news here at the toss where Northern's good. At, they've won the toss and they've elected to stick to what's going before. They're going to bowl first. And that was the outcome at the toss. But we've had another couple of chats with the coaches of the two respective teams. So we're going to get their insights just before this match and hear what they have to say. Okay, welcome back here to the Golf Ticket Presents Cape Town Club Cricket 
League T10. We're here with Manny Sengers. He is the coach of the Umbro Cricket Club. Manny, first time we're getting to have a, your views on it, on this competition as well. So give us a little bit of your thoughts about the T10 competition. Eugene, yeah, listen, um, we weren't sure in the beginning what it was all about. And uh, obviously, when you caught up in this game now, in the tournament, we're actually very impressed. The players are very excited to play. They all want to be part of it now. So, no, it's a fantastic, fantastic effort for the guys. Um, good show put on by everybody, the organisers, and we, we're very happy to be part of it. Yeah, absolutely. You, you're certainly a man that's a big competitor within Western Province ranks, and I, think, I don't think that's going to change within this T10 competition. So, I think you would really like to go out there and still do well. I think, Eugene, yeah, we, we caught up in the competition now. Eh? You play a competition, you play to win. That's what it's about. At uh, the same time, I want our guys to enjoy it and have fun. It's a little extra longer season. Um, they've all made time. They've sacrificed their time with their family, and we want to have a good time. Same time, we compete if we want to win. Absolutely, yeah. I've seen you guys warm up, so I don't think you're taking this competition lightly. So give us a little bit of your insight as to what you think as a coach going into planning, going to prep, and maybe even during the game time as well. Man, I think planning, yeah, 10, uh, 10 over game is a bit short to plan much. I think it's just about a license for the guys to play and, and show their skills and, and sort of freedom to play the, their shots. I think the important thing is, I've asked them to assess the situation and adjust accordingly. Don't be silly, don't premeditate. You only allow yourself to premeditate once you've assessed everything. Otherwise, no, it's game on. It's, uh, it's, it's, we've got good batters, we've got some decent batters with good skills. So, no, no, we, we competitive, we want to do well, yeah. And you're still excited to work with players young and old as well. I think your side, you've got the evergreen Yaku Castle still there going and doing the buzz for you. I don't know who keeps me more grey. The youngsters, <laughs> all the old guys, but Yaku, yeah, yeah, good to have Yaku around. Um, and the youngsters are exciting to have as well. Uh, he's, you know, he's a senior statesman. He works with all the youngsters. He's hard on them, gives them a the hard time. At the same time, he gives them a lot of reference, a lot of feedback as well after the game. So. Happy to have him around, yeah. I'm not going to put the markers on you because we have seen you with teams really go well at the start of the tournament and then when it comes to the playoffs, you're not that, you're not that successful. So how are you going to try and manage that sort of thing as well, knowing how competitive you are, knowing what has gone before? No, listen, I want the guys to play high-quality cricket. I think it's to be calm under pressure and to still back themselves. And, yeah, we go hard, know what you want to do, and we want to win. You know, we've played tournaments before. We've won national mm. tournaments, so... That's not a scary thing. It's just the shorter version we must just sort out. Okay. Go well, Manny. Nice to have your views. All good. Enjoy the day. And that was the view of Manny Segers, well-known coach here in the Western Cape here. It's been very successful here with Durbanville Cricket Club. And there we have the two teams. And who's going to talk us through those two teams? I'm delighted to announce I'm with James again. James, welcome back here. And I think an interesting day in prospect here for us. Absolutely right. Thank you so much, Eugene. We've got the top of the log, Durbanville Cricket Club, sponsored by World 777 against Northern's Goodwood Cricket Club, sponsored by Taj 777. It's going to be a really interesting game with the bottom of the log, Northern's Goodwood, going to be bowling first, which is exactly what they wanted to do. And uh, with the team from Durbanville, Right there at the top of the log, net run rate, 6.32, Eugene. That's massive. Yeah, that's massive, and that constitutes the two, the two big victories they've had. As I said, it's top, the bottom. Northern's good to find themselves second from bottom, actually. And uh, they still to get a points on here. But I think it's still an interesting day ahead. And I think everybody, especially for me, I think, I'm glad Durbanville Cricket Club is batting first. The reason why I'm saying is we haven't seen a team, yes, they haven't won the toss, but they would have batted first anyway. So I think both teams getting what they wanted. And that's exactly the, the thing here. They got exactly what they wanted, and let's see how they're going to acquit themselves early on. Interesting in the chat with the coach there, just saying don't premeditate have a look at the conditions and then then you can go rather than just having a full-on tilt first up yeah no that's definitely right you still allowed can afford yourself a little bit of time maybe two three balls just to <laughs> see what it's like and there we see jean straight on high he's gone in this tournament he's played he's played two matches got two innings just a mess to any three runs but kai Curran, he's been wow. the man in form here with his two innings Massing 117 runs, and left, and that column on the right there also does it with the ball for his team. Incredible stuff there from Kai Curran, 
and he will not be taking strike right up front it's going to be John straight on taking first ball and we'll have a look at these conditions then and see that we expect that ball to be moving around quite a bit at first of that Eugene well just looking at what's gone before that's what we've had and there we have it Vivian Engelbrecht he's been quite good with ball in hand so we're gonna focus on that column on the right hand side as they bowling first he's been somebody that runs in and hits the pitch and I think the bowlers that have hit the pitch that's at a fuller length yeah has been very successful here as well with that ball nipping around so but these two Sean Stradom and Kai Corrin they take the attack to him really big strong men these guys are and they're not gonna hang around I can tell you that I can see that with that 117 runs so far just in the two games has been Durbanville incredibly dominant in this tournament so far both of these teams two games two wins for Durbanville two losses for Northern's Goodwood they want to get on the board here today the men in yellow here they go the yellow machine Vivian Engelbrecht first ball and that's a dot sort of trying to hit the pitch there that was a real loosener by Vivian Engelbrecht and I think John Stratum probably should have put that away <laughs> yeah his eyes perhaps not lighting up enough on that one just bunting it out into the offside but it's going to be Engelbrecht again there's that fuller length and there as you said it just letting that ball go just having a look and see how's it coming off that surface is it kissing the surface getting on or is it standing up a little bit so I don't think he's going to leave the next one. No, I don't think so. Just a little bit of movement away there, Eugene. Not too much. Just a little bit of nip there. Nip in the air and a nip of the pitch. There we go. <laughs> Just again, getting the bottom edge. So again, James, you've been on comms with me before. I always look at that over and dividing it up into two segments, the first three and the last three. The first three balls definitely going the way of the yellow team there. Northern's good at yeah, they've got the orange army here, just where they want them after the first three balls. Yeah, well, I tell you what, when they amassed that 147 there the other day, they only were in the 20s of the power play, wow. so it just shows how they can accelerate. So that's another talking point that's going to be that power play. Yeah, well, we could see earlier on, I mean, Saturday we had that absolute onslaught, wasn't it? in the second innings by Rondebosch Cricket Club. 70 or 3.2 overs, my word. So it's possible. Oh, just down the leg side, that ball must have flicked something. So it's a little bit of a quiet start here by all concern. We four balls into it, one run scored. Kai Curran's on strike. I think they're just warming up. You know, the weather overhead a little bit cool today. Weather overhead, weather all over is generally cool here today. I think I need to get my top on. <laughs> Big appeal! I'm not sure. I'm not sure what Renshaw was doing there. He saw the hand come up, but I think she was just flicking her nose there. She says not out though. So they got through for another single. Smiles all around. Did a double take on that one. Thought for all love and money she was actually going to put that finger up, but uh, certainly didn't. So just the uh, four balls gone. All change uh, now. Five balls, James. Oh, five, five balls. balls. Now, this sorry. game's happened so quickly. Got to yeah, keep up does. with us here, James. <laughs> one ball to go. Two <laughs> runs on the board. Can the yellow machine finish us over off well? You bet they can. Two runs off the first over. Great stuff from Vivian Engelbrecht there. He's got them under the cosh first thing. Oh, one over <laughs> gone. Only nine overs to go. You just tick those overs down. Two overs to go in the power play. What an over that has been for Vivian Engelbrecht. For Northern's Good, it's sponsored by TAR 777. The Yellow Brigade from Northern's Good. They all in here with supporters and all. Fire's being lit as well. 10 o'clock start. Oh. Beautiful. Fabulous. Looking forward to that. A bry lunch today, perhaps. 
It's really been a good start here for Northern's Goodwood CC, sponsored by Taj 777. Here with us at Golf Ticket presents Cape Town Club Cricket League T10. Just a reminder today, we're going to have a strategic timeout after five overs. Just two minutes for the teams to get the coach on the field. Just rejig those tactics, Eugene. Yeah, definitely. Just got a little bit of thinking to do. So at least it's a good introduction to bring in that golf ticket strategic timeout as well for these two teams. But now we have Ryan Capes. Now this man had, had, had an interesting game the last time out. He bowled well. But I'm going to talk about why his day was interesting just after this delivery. And he's bowling to the inform Kai Curran. And he will be hitting a little bit with the breeze that's here on offer. Yeah, left-handers seem to have really been enjoying this field, I must say. Oh, here he goes, Ryan Cape steaming in. Uh, this starts with a wide, and I hope that's not going to add to his interesting day, because the reason why I said that, on two consecutive balls, he dropped two catches. That's right. And the ball went straight up, he didn't need to move for it. He managed to drop the ball twice the same way. But he really bowled well, though. He came back and bowled well for his team. So can he do the same here for Northern Scudu Cricket Club? Sponsored by Taz 777. He's bowling to Kai Curran. Three's the score. Oh, just sitting in the pitch a little bit and... This is what we said. The teams would rather want to bowl first because they're not sure how conditions are. Yeah, exactly, Eugene. It's been a tournament where the team batting second has dominated. Nine games, eight of those won by the team batting second. So we saw that on Saturday, massively quick chase by the Rondebosch in that second inning, knocking the runs off in 3.2 overs. Again, down the leg side. So we've had a wide, we've had a dot, we've had a wide. Shall we have another dot this time? <laughs> certainly look that way with the sort of patterns we are certainly dishing up here. Yeah, we want to keep some, con con some consistency there on the scorecard, maybe. <laughs> you only got 45 minutes to bowl your overs in. Third umpire, Wilma, just keeping an eye on the time there as well. The strategic timer is being added to that 45 minutes. The teams have got to play with that in mind as well. Yeah, she's got the calculator out here. Has Wilma making sure she's got everything under control? Well, just hope she gets called upon here today. Seems to be having a life of leisure here as a third umpire. Well, I can tell you something. On Saturday afternoon, she was actually running out into the pitch with new balls. Again, down the leg side, umpire, Ivan de Jong. He says, okay, that seems to have gone over the stumps. Kai Curran, not so happy. Can't always be a batter's game, eh? No, can't always be a batter's game. I think he just wanted to get the consistency on the scoreboard. I called it. <laughs> I called it, James. I have called it. Please, what type of W are we going to have on the next spot column there? Well, as long as he doesn't hit that ball up in the air, Ryan should be fine. That's tickled down to fine leg. Half stopped. Eventually come through for a one. And we've got one of the bat finally there in this over. So I think this might suit Ryan Capes a little bit. Because he has been bowling away down the leg side. So now with the right hand on strike, it should be a little bit better. However, apologies, it's Ashley Green. It's Ashley Green. Just getting the name right here. Thanks to Wilmer. Yeah, got the name wrong on the scorecard here, but it is Ashley Green, that man who dropped those two catches on uh, Saturday. Did come back well, as indeed Eugene said, with that comeback over. But Ashley away from us now. Now, now the, the thing in for me here is Jean Stratum feeds on width. And with that ball shaping away, I find that he's going to get that arms through a little bit better. Okay, so just, 
just not coming on, is it, Eugene? He's just finding it difficult at the moment to get that ball, get the measure of the pitch, the batters. Yeah, it's just also because of the nature of the bowl. It's not guys that are really quicker through the air. It's going to be a wide delivery, though. And it just seems to be a, a lot of wides in this over. Just need to settle. Yeah, Ashley Green here, here, just trying to get that line right. A little bit of a way swing from the, the right-handed batter. Just not getting that quite on the spot yet. It's just constitutes of the lack of pace. That's wide again. I'm just going to go across here to my scorers. That's wide number five, I think. Wide number four, I'm told. Thanks, Wilma, there as well. As you're noting everything down there. Once you get past six, they can't count. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, now this is a challenge for the batter, you see. They can normally only count to six. I'm going to give you another interesting fact here now. <laughs> this one is cut away, and this time John straight and finds the gap. Falls racing away to the boundary. It's a good stop there. Keeps it down, and they're going to come back for the third. Uh, great running there, Eugene, to come back for the third. Good stop. Excellent stop, but I just had a little bit of a look at my watch there, and if this is only over number two, they've taken about 12 minutes to bowl two overs. <laughs> wow. That is going to give them a lot of pressure in terms of finishing within that 45 minutes. Just a reminder that if they do go over time, there will be a fielding penalty where they have to bring a fielder in for whatever number of overs still left in the match. Uh, you know what I don't understand here, James? Being a bowler as well, you will keep knocking your head against the barn door all the time. Why not just come around the wicket and maybe try and straighten it up for yourself? Yeah, this is where your senior players and your captain of the field are so important. Come and have a chat to your bowler, give him some advice. He's just having a look at how that ball's moving, isn't he? <laughs> Much better ball, but well played that by Kai Curran, hitting the ball through the covers. That's to the furthest boundary out there. The ball's been flicked back, and they're going to get another three runs. And I said... Ashley Green had an interesting day there last time out. He certainly had a very, very interesting over that time out as the scores moved on to 14 without loss after two overs. Scratch the head there from the bowler. And I can understand why. Just a really tough over that one. But the scorecard looks pretty symmetrical there. Four off six for Jean and four off six for Kai. And you sense now they've had enough chance to have a look at the pitch with that 12 ball over, sorry, 11 ball over. I mean, if somebody bowls you the amount of balls they bowl to you in an over, you'll take that. So now, which was a very <laughs> circumspect, circumspect start for Durbanville Cricket Club, sponsored by World 7-7. Seven, seven. Now, they've got 14 of two. And if they get an over here of 10, they certainly turn things around here for them as well. And that's why I say you just can't, you just got to be patient even within that power play period. It's going to be Vivian Engel Engelbrecht to bowl his second and final over. Again being wrapped on the pad. Big appeal. And again the... <laughs> Got to ask Renshaw not to, do, not to do that. The finger comes up, but it was about telling where the ball was going. It's just a leg by. Leg by signaled now by umpire Renshaw Pretorius. Got, got his. Uh, Just word there from the third umpire, Wilmer. That's great feedback that, in actual fact, Vivian is running straight down the middle and can't see. And she can't see past him. So if she can't see, she can't give it. Big hit! Uh, huge! Huge hit! Here we go, the power of John Stradom. 
What a beauty! Just hitting that one straight over that sponsor sign, MG Lion there. And to the left of the side screens, we are looking at it. Beautiful shot. Oh, that's... We spoke yesterday just about guys standing still, being strong, hitting from that strong base and just getting the momentum going through. Beautiful shot. This one is cut away straight to the fielder. That is Tasha's tea bag. Doing the business there <laughs> with a stop. I didn't give him that name. <laughs> I'm sure you didn't. Eugene's got all the names. He knows all the players here. He's certainly getting to getting us to know them. That's pulled away. There's no one back there now. He's a ball gonna go. It seems to have skid on. And it's going to be a four as well. Now, I said at the start of this over, if they get an over of 10 or more here, all of a sudden that momentum has changed. Yeah, it was that 12 run over before. And then John straight on here making abs the most of that short one. You can't bowl short on this surface. Just sits up beautifully for you. No, it just sits up. And I think that his teammates are not happy with him. I'll tell you that why. Why now? And this one is dabbed down. Kai Curran comes through. He fancies himself. Sort of the look I got here from their teammates just to our right here was, why didn't Jean not hit that for six? It's a shorter boundary of that side. Couldn't clear a big strong man like himself. Anyway, he got four for them. Yeah, it just didn't have that nice sound off the bat, did it? A bit of a clunking sound as he hit it. But he managed to get it over the inner ring. I think you said it, that sometimes they just want to overhit it. <laughs> that time he just lost it. So one ball to come. This over, it's gone for 12 already. Beautiful shot straight to extra cover. That's going to be a dot ball, and that's going to conclude the power play period here with Durbanville Cricket Club. Sponsored by World 777, have moved on to 26 without loss. And I tell you what, look at that batting card. Mm. There are some serious players still to come in this team. Guys, where they had the, they so big, James. They had the shirts painted on. That's how big they are. <laughs> uh, it's been a good over there for Durbanville Cricket Club, and particularly Jean straight on a beautiful six. We just stood still there when he played that one. Uh, yeah, he stood still so so well there when he hit that one. Just waiting for the ball. It wasn't so much that he was actually you know moving around the crease which i think is crucial in these type of games 100 percent can't agree with you more there james just got to stand still here get a strong base and hit from there and that's what he showed but then the second time around i think he was trying to swing himself off his feet as we're going to have the captain eric the shuffler osner coming into the attack here now for the men in yellow northern's good cricket club sponsored by taj 777 and he's going to be bowling to that man john stratum as well well, let's see if it is going to be difficult with a bit of moisture on the ball for the spinner here. Let's see what he can do. John Stratton looking really good at the moment. All right, that's played out to the longer, bigger boundary. Now, can they come through for two? Oh, ball went straight over the stumps. Well fielded there by Pierce Seister. Yeah, it was in quickly, but he still gave them time for the two. Why are they out? All right, on the boundary. Should be coming in about, you know, five, ten meters. Prevent the two. Definitely ten. Definitely ten meters for sure. Just don't understand that. But anyway. Yeah, we said it on Saturday when I was here with you, Eugene. So why is there's a two runs any any time there? You're going to hit it square. You hit it straight here Again, trying to move that and that's going to bring another couple of runs for sure that's a deep back with scare makes a way around and they just keep the sport the scoreboard ticking positively here we'll check the score around the 87 they said i said it just at the pitch report i felt that if they can keep themselves get themselves under 100 i think they got a chance the team in yellow that's beautifully played to extra cover no run. Bit of a fumble there. Hot potato. <laughs> he was definitely juggling with that one. You know a bit about hot potatoes in Ireland, I'm sure. Uh, 
We love our potatoes up there. Again, trying to hit that maybe across the line more instead of hitting it straight. That's two dot balls, two dot balls now. Eric the Shuffler Osner doing the buzz. He's got two balls to come. Four runs conceded this over. And really, this is turning out to be a very important over. He's going to be another dot. It's well, Bob's only going to bring one. And I've always felt, James, and I think I mentioned this to you on Saturday, where overs four and five have been very crucial, especially after that power play period as well. Yeah, this time now for them, very important. Can they make it count from a bowling point of view? And this should be an interesting one. He's going to see the left-hander. If he can play it over that short boundary, it's going to be coming into him from the left arm. Orthodox spinner. Still going to be bowling around the wicket, so he's bowling into that arc. Now he's over the wicket. He's over the wicket. Powerfully hit through. Extra cover. Let me tell you, you're not going to find a shot hit much purer than that today. Kai Curran, what a shot that was. It just sounded like a rocket. Well, it looks at things that I think John Stratham should be getting singles and giving the strike to Kai Curran. Man in form, 117 of two outings so far. Yeah, definitely. But these two really complement each other so well. The left-handed Kai Curran, the right-handed John Stratham. They've taken the total to 35 without loss of the four. My, oh, my, we're looking at a three-figure score here for sure. If these two get going, there are the bowling figures. Vivian Engelbrecht, he bowled his two. His first over went for one run. Let's not forget that. Ashley Green was, was indifferent, let's say that. Eric Osner, he went for under 10, and I think that's a key as well, as you're going to have Pierre Seister. He's going to be bowling here from the town end, bowling some more seam. What he does is he does try and hit the, the pitch a little bit harder. He has got a change of pace as well. Yeah, a good first over on Saturday. It, as you say, it was really not a big total that they were defending. And it really went down to the wire as well. So a good bowling effort from Northern's Goodwood on Saturday. Wrapped on the pad. That was going down the leg side. It's just going to be one. That's going to bring Kai current on strike now we're heading into that golf ticket strategic timeout period at the end of this over of the five overs both teams have the luxury of having a little bit of a rethink as to how they're going to approach this game going forward for the remaining innings and i'm certainly looking forward to what that's going to bring as well well i think it's going to be opening it up for the team from Durban. depends whether they're going to if they lose a wicket in this over maybe change the tactics slide but i don't think so Dot ball again, dot ball. Those are gold dust. Yeah, really great here from Pierce Seister. Keeping out. it really Just neat so and tidy. And we'll Just the uh, single so far off the over. Just off that leg by. Seister running in again here. The sun ticked in and pulled away. Just beating the man at short, fine leg, and that's another four. To Dermville Creek Club. Well, that one, if you'd had a uh, fielder six foot tall, he might have been able to get his hand up for that one, but it was played over with a significant amount of power by Kai Curran. He's really in great form, is this young man. Adding to those 117, he's already scored in the tournament so far, and so now accelerating to a lot more than a runner ball. That time looking for the big shot and looked like it took the pace off it. But again, they're going to come back for two. And this is good stuff here by Durbanville Cricket Club, sponsored by World 777. As we near our, near our time to that golf ticket, strategic timeout here for these two teams. Yeah, they're putting this pressure on the fielders there as well, going for the two every single time. And very important for them to do that. Plenty of runs on the leg side here for the left-hander. Whoa! Oh, we've seen that happen several times. 
And I think that is not to do with anything of the pitch. It's maybe just how his foot landed on the pitch. There's several players I've seen happen that. And more often than not, they think it's the pitch, but it's just the way his foot comes in. Also, he probably got a bit of dirt under those on those spikes, you know? So just trying to rub his foot there clear. Probably just a, a spike. Let's have a look at it again and see. That back foot goes, and that's not the pitch at that all. That has got nothing to do with the pitch. That is just how his foot landed on the side of his foot going forward. I guess you can still the pitch sore. Just to say that that was more about how his back foot landed. Again on the pad. Might have been a little bit of an edge. There was a little bit of an edge there, as shown by Renship, Victorias, and our sponsors. They are, and our umpires are sponsored by ID247. Yeah, as you were saying there, a bit dangerous as his foot came down just on the on the side of the foot that he landed at that you know, as his his back foot just landing almost a big ankle potential ankle sprain there happening for him. Final four of this before we go into that timeout. Uh that was flicked on the pad. So that concludes five overs of this contest between Northern's Guru Cricket Club, sponsored by TAR 777. They up against Durbanville Cricket Club. They sponsored by World 777. We're going to go now into the golf ticket. Strategic timeout. Golf ticket, strategic timeout. Millions with the golf ticket. The UAE's premier online raffle draw. Experience the thrill of life-changing possibilities and become the lucky winner to draw huge amounts with Gulf Ticket. Register on gulfticket.com or Kheli Ek Kismat Ka Khel. Sab se zada bharo se mand raffle draw UAE ka. Karodo kamaiye aur apne sapno ko pura kariye gulfticket.com pe. Fully regulated, authorized and registered raffle draw from UAE. अपनी किस्मत आजमाइए अभी तुरंत जाइए और गल्फ टिकट डॉट कॉम पे रजिस्टर करिए ये देख सकते हैं वी आर राइट नाउ सींग द गल्फ टिकट राफिल ड्रॉ गल्फ टिकट स्ट्रेटेजिक टाइम आउट ये यूई का सबसे प्रीमियम सबसे प्रीमियर सबसे ज्यादा भरोसेमंद राफिल ड्रॉ है ये बहुत ही प्यारी तरीके से एक स्ट्रेटेजिक टाइम आउट इंट्रोड्यूस किया है हमने गल्फ टिकट प्रेजेंस केप टाउन क्लब क्रिकेट लीग टी टेन क्रिकेट का असली एनिमल में ये दो मिनट का स्ट्रेटेजिक टाइम आउट है विच विल बी आफ्टर द फिफ्थ ओवर ऑफ ईच इनिंग्स गल्फ टिकट शेयरिंग मिलियन स्माइल्स एकदम सही टैगलाइन दिया है क्योंकि करोड़ों लोगों को इन्होंने ना सिर्फ जिताया है पर उनकी उनकी किस्मत पलटी है गल्फ टिकट ने ये यूई का सबसे प्रीमियर राफेल ड्रॉ है अभी रजिस्टर करिए गल्फ टिकट डॉट कॉम पे ये देखिए हमारे अपकमिंग मैच है रॉन्डे बॉश क्रिकेट क्लब विनफेयर टू फोर सेवन ने जिनको स्पॉन्सर किया है वर्सेस मिलिटन क्रिकेट क्लब जिसको कि लॉर्ड्स एक्सचेंज ने स्पॉन्सर किया है ये अगला मैच है शाम पांच बजे भारतीय टाइम के मुताबिक साढ़े तीन बजे यूई टाइम के मुताबिक और डेढ़ बजे साउथ अफ्रीकन टाइम के मुताबिक चैनल तो आपको पता ही है that two minutes now concluded. What's your take and where do you think this game could potentially go in the next five overs here? Well, I reckon now you're going to see these two really opening up and uh, Durbanville Cricket Club, sponsored by World 777, will be looking at getting at least 100 here, maybe 110, 120. They're going to be really giving it a full go. Certainly with 10 wickets in hand, you would think that they will certainly do that as it's Dwayne Abel coming into the attack here. But now the interesting thing for me is we've taken half an hour to build five overs. Yes, it's going to be interesting to see if they can get them all in. Oh, again, 
and just trying to hit that too hard. Got all the shots, doesn't he, Kai Curran? No, plays beautifully, leg and offside. Big hit, huge hit. And is that a sign of things to come here, James? Oh, I definitely think so. That strategic timeout saying, okay, guys, time to go now. Minimum two boundaries per over. And if we can get two or three maximums in and over, it's going to push us well over to that 120. That's hit again through cover. It's just going to be one. The good thing in their favor for Dermot Creek Club, they've got a right and left hander here. So Kai Curran, he's hitting towards a shorter boundary. So he can attack it more. So if that's part of the thinking behind Manny and the Durbanville Cricket Club, what they stoked about, because certainly when they're both from town in, then it's John Strainham and all the right hand is coming to play, hitting it to the shorter boundary. Powerful hit down the ground. He's done exactly what his captain would have wanted him to do there, John Strainham. Make sure he gets Kai Curran back on strike onto that short boundary. Eugene's showing exactly what he thinks he's going to be doing now. Up and over. It's going to be straight to the man and as well caught by that man, Tasha's T-Bag Robbenheimer. <laughs> Super catch on the boundary. And that's the first wicket gone there for Durbanville Cricket Club. Hey. Live by the sword, die by the sword here, and let's look at it as a full go. Doesn't get all of it, gets a lot of elevation. Wayne Abel saying, please, please catch this why he does. He's just, just inside the boundary rope. Brilliant catch there from that man from Northern's Goodwill, and it's Tertius Teabags Robenheimer. Yeah, T-Bags, you're going to tell me where that comes from. I've got nothing to do with that. I'm not even taking any credit or whatever. But that's the end of it. Of Hi, Curran. That brings the captain, Ruben Cynical. And he's also had a really good start to this tournament. 54 runs in his two outings. The power just keeps coming from this Durbanville Cricket Club side here. Another powerful player. But now, interesting thinking is we've got two right-handers now. So it could be beneficial here for team from Northern's Goodwood. Dwayne Abel getting that wicket. He'd really be happy with that. It was a good catch taken on the boundary. Thought he might have gone in a little bit too far. Managed to take it over his head. That's the experience of him as Abel. He comes in straight away. That ball is powerfully struck to T-Bag as well. And that's just going to be one. And Dwayne Abel, he's been able to get... The breakthrough there for Northern's good dude. And that over just it was Kai Curran losing his wicket, so 22 of 17. And then the new man coming in, getting that single, and he's going to be back on uh, strike. In fact, going to be, yeah, he's going to be the captain there, Ruben Senecal on strike for the next over. New bowler. Puff hit down. Oh, just didn't want it down there. Ruben cynical. He's come in and started playing his shot. Now he's going to have to do that. It's four overs to go. That's getting squirted down to deep square. Uh, he's looking to capitalize on that short boundary on the leg side, just not able to get it up and over in this instance. Back in again, way down the leg side, and some ex 
some work there for the umpire Tertia Rensha Pretorius. So it's Rensha Pretorius. And Ryan Capes, the bowler. He's gone for the old foot. Oh, we saw some good football last night. He just couldn't rep emulate that as well with his right foot there, Ryan Capes. And time is sticking away here. Ryan Capes hasn't bowled in this tournament yet. He's got three balls. He's done great stuff here for his team. That is carved over point. Couple of bounces, four runs. Oh, what a beauty there from Sean Straight on. It is a carving it over cover, short and wide. Got the treatment. Great stuff here. Now, still wanting to maybe target that short boundary on the leg side for the right hander. But is he going to get the chance? Still two balls left in the over, eight so far. Strong man in John Stratum. Don't give him any worth. Said he likes to free his arms up. Where's Capes going to go now? Goes full of length. And if he can bowl that, why not stick there, young? Yeah, that's the way to go. I mean, playing over the top of that one. Just looking over to my right here, you've got Vieja still to come. You've got LaRue still to come. You've got Yaku Castle still to come. Big hit, huge hit. That's a big flat six over to the far side and has made his way over to the sea field. Well, he's looking at that. Umpire Rensha Pretorius keeping her feet on the ground, reaching for the sky with that one. Huge hit. Pray that was in the arc. And as I say, it's gone out the park. The end of that over. Seven gone, 66, Eugene. 100 still possible? Oh, definitely. Especially with these two and the power still to come in the hutch. I think they'll be very disappointed if they don't get there to those three figures. Still searching for the ball, and I think they're going to need a new one because that ball has gone a long way. Uh, so some more work here for Wilma Jones. Uh, it's by time, it's by time. Let's look at Wolf 777. ID 247. They're the umpire sponsors there. Doing great work getting the umpires out there as well. That's umpire Ivan De Jong. It's just getting another umpire out. I think that one went into the sprinklers. They're sort of watering the field on the far side. I'm not sure why, because we had a lot of rain here overnight. This is what I never understood. Why do the batsmen get a choice as to how, what the ball should look like and feel like and everything else? Is it white enough? Is it hard enough? Just get on with the game. Umpires decide what it's supposed to be. <laughs> Spoken like a true bowler there, Eugene. <laughs> <laughs> 100%. <laughs> that are the umpire sponsors ID 247. That's Billy 777, one of the team sponsors as well. going to be Eric the shuffler Osner to continue sort of ringing the changes here he's the captain have some left arm spin that's big hit that's a huge hit that's in the car park here behind us that is massive Absolutely huge. That's like over 90 meters. Of course, not to fall from here. No. <laughs> I think he just got that one. Maybe it's a hole in one. Well, let me tell you, I don't know if Skinnikov plays golf, but I don't want to give him a driving hand. If that's the way he hits it, he stood there, delivered, and that ball has gone many a mile. Many a mile. Have oh, a look at that one again. We did, and it was a huge hit over there. Clubhouse, yeah. My goodness. This is not helping their timekeeping as that's the type of sponsor golf ticket. We saw there, Bet Creek 7. Saw the national T 
team that they sponsor for him in action yesterday. I do. What's the response going to be here from the captain? Eric the Shuffler, Osner. Let's try to go wide and John straight. I'm not surprised. He's calling him through there. So it's two more runs. Now all of a sudden, the team in yellow under the cost here. Absolutely, this orange army marching on here to the tune of the spin of Eric Osner. And that's an absolute magnificent shot. Over extra, flat as you like. John Stratum, what immense power. Beautiful, beautiful shot over that offside, short boundary. Just beautifully picked up, but it was over pitch. Wide gives him the opportunity. I think these two are going to compare who's hitting the bigger sixes here. Oh, just missing out. And the oohs and ahs from the sideline here. They were more disappointed by that. Just managed to get a single. Now, I don't think they're going to stop here. Ruben Seneca, he's on strike. Nine or four deliveries. Big hit, huge hit. We're in for some cracking shots now. The power to put us down flat as you like. Into acceleration mode here. And uh, yeah, if they had a gearbox, they've moved it to that R now for racing. Samus hit flat, but quicker there by Eric. In there, fielded there by Jordy. Now that's again a single. Now we all know what happens after they get a single. It's always a six the next ball. Oh, he's tried to moose that. John Stratum ends up in a dot. And what an over that has been. Well appreciated here by the crowd sitting here. Applauding their team, Durbanville Cricket Club, sponsored by World 777. They moved on to 82 for one. Yeah, then they're over. Eight. Eight gone now. And two overs to go. Eugene, 88 they're on. Looking like it's going to be 110 perhaps. That's the next game we can look forward to. Rondebosch Cricket Club, the Premier League champions, sponsored by Winfair 247. They'll be up against Mullerton Cricket Club. They are sponsored by Lords Exchange. And I'm looking forward to this one as well because of what I've heard. Rondebosch Cricket Club, they're coming with their big guns today. Oh, my goodness. If the big guns on Saturday weren't enough. That's down the leg side. Must start by Seneca. It's going to be a wide. Seister bowling. Be in for some 12 balls of action here. Hold on to your hats, people. Powerfully hit down the ground. I tell you what, this kid has got immense power. Yes, indeed. And it just, when he hits it, it stays hit there, Eugene. Massive hits from both of these so far. He's batting at over a Two runs of all at the moment. John Stratum strike. You <laughs> new balls, please. <laughs> We've got a combination of golf, tennis, and cricket happening here. And Will umpire Wilma Jones be caught into action again? She's checking here in this box of uh, used balls that she's got in front of her. And she may well have to go over there onto the field and help them out once again, making notes in terms of all the time that's been lost, getting all these uh, errant balls that are flying all over the place. What I don't understand Yes, T10, yeah, we're looking at it and we're just saying, yeah, it needs a little bit of a big hit, big bash, whatever. It's got to be thinking involved as well. The bigger boundary is to the offside here of Jean Stratum. Why not go full and wide and force him to hit you through the offside? You 
can't ball straight here because if you go straight, the options are straight over the back of the bowler, which we've just seen, or you can flick you of the legs and go to the shorter boundary. So they've just got to think a little bit about where to bowl here as bowlers as well. Full and wide outs at offside, forcing them to hit you to the bigger boundary. Yeah, Eugene, as you say, on-field management, how you're going to play it, play to the conditions. We're not seeing too much of that from the bowling team at the moment. You set the field to make sure you can restrict the runs, but you're not actually bowling to your field. It just doesn't make sense. You know, you've got to think a little bit. It's not just about running in. I'm sure that for the experience that Durbanville Cricket Club have with their campaign, they'll have that 96 now, the score. Powerfully hit. One bounce to long off. Oohs and ahs again here by the supporters of Durbanville Career Club. Score moves to 97 and <laughs> dare be said, we one hit away from three figures here with an over still to go. Huge stuff here from Durbanville Cricket Club, sponsored by World 777. That is outside the guideline there. But at least maybe he's thinking about going that direction now. 46 minutes gone in this inning so far, Eugene. I'm a commentator. I'm not going to be doing the rules there. That's up in the air. And that's going to go over. Third man is making his way to the boundary. It's not going to get there. It's Geordie there. And again, excellent running. And that brings up the 100 for Durbanville Cricket Club. Sponsored by World 777. Big over here again for Durbanville Cricket Club. Already 13 off the over, Eugene. Two balls to come. Could be a 20-plus over. Anything is possible, yeah. John straight on back on strike. He's on 46 off 27 deliveries. What a knock it's been by him. Ruben Seneca, 20 of 8 deliveries. Yeah, plenty of wires so far as well. Full toss. Full toss. And what a ball to get. For you to get a chance to get to 50, you are going to face up to a free hit here. Couldn't ask for anything better, could you? And the over now gone for 14 already. And it's oh, more now. And I say, there's going to be two balls still to come. And a free hit. That is hit ah, to the sweep on the offside. They're going to come back for two because let me tell you, it is some throw to get you out from there. So definitely one on the arm as well. So two runs to the total. Two runs to Jean Stratum as he moves on to 48. What you're saying there is, Eugene, one on the off is worth two on the arm. <laughs> Got to remember that one. That's up in the air. Is it going to go? It's gone all the way for six. And that brings up his 50. What a knock by Jean Stratum. Again, a length ball again straight. That's the sort of boundary he's gone for there. And that ball has carried all the way. And it's gone for six. And an absolute magnificent array of hitting here by Jean Stratum. Oh, he's just taken a lead from his captain here as well. He's come in all guns blazing. 20 off 8, I think he had. So both of these two now scoring rates over 200 or approaching the 200. And it's 110 with an over to go. 130 a possibility. Well, if the hitting is anything to go by. It's going to be Dwayne Abel. And is he able just to contain these batters? They're not going to hold back here. You can be sure of that. Ruben Senegal, he's going to have first dubs here in this last over. Flat ball hit. Firm down the ground. Jordy do, doing the fielding there. That's only gone for one. 
And I tell you, they even won or like gold dust. It is. You take it any minute. One, one, one for one. Get your feet up, James. Get your feet up, James. Up the Nelson. ground they are. <laughs> Looking at the dressing room here to our right. Yeah. Todd Bull. Keep your feet up, James. Mm. Off the ground. Well, we're expecting able to be caned here. He's not been so far. Uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll take that. Here we go. Ball number three. That's the final over. Well, bold by Dwayne. A little bit of a misfield, but it's just going to be one. First three balls goes to Dwayne Abel and Northern's Goodwood Cricket Club. Sponsored by Tar 777. Brings Ruben Sienekal. He's on strike. Powerful hit down the ground. T-bag, can he get there? Oh, it's superb stuff. Excellent work there by Tasha's T-bag, Robenheimer. Superb stuff. Oh, getting the applause there from the bowler, and he's done a brilliant work to stop that one going over the bounds. Have a look at it again. Swings it over to the leg side, bounces up, manages to stop it one-handed. Recovers. Is it going to get to the boundary? And uh, no. Uh, Who knows? The, well, the umpire signal that was for it was actually uh, Tasha's rope, and I'm actually indicating that the ball touched the rope as oh, well. Well done. So fair play, play to T-Bag. That squared it over onto the offside. They're going to come back for two definitely. So it's going to be two more runs to the total as we head into the final delivery. Of this innings, one one eight for one. Said this team is powerhouse, and we're only gonna see three batters today. Again, powerful hit down the ground. Jordy's gonna mop up. Are they gonna come back for two? John Stratham, he comes back for two. Gets the run out, I'm sure, and it's gonna be Ivan De Jong. He indicates, let's have a third decision on that. But that concludes the innings. So it will either be one run or two. I feel it's only going to be the one, James. From our position, we thought that that was out. Yeah, certainly looked like he hadn't made his grounds, been referred through to the third umpire, or is it not? Yeah, we're waiting for it now. Decision pending. Yeah, it was great work there by Jordy, the youngster, getting the ball in. And it was an excellent throw. One bounce through the bowler. Dwayne Abel and simply just had to take the bales off as soon as he caught the ball. So I'm sure this is only going to be the one, but we'll wait and see as Wilma has to do a job here. This has been an excellent innings here by Durbanville Cricket Club, sponsored by World 777. They've been absolutely magnificent here. I know they lost the toss, but I think they would have batted first anyway. And certainly led by that man, John Stratum. He got 55. Ruben Sienegal, he came in and played an absolute gem from ball one. Just looked like he wanted to get off to the ball straight away. Kai Curran played his part as well. And like I said, we've only getting through three of their batters here. Yeah, they are a serious powerhouse. 120 for one, so that's a massive total for Northern's Goodwood to get, and 121. So they're gonna have to go through it right from the start. They haven't got a choice here. 12 and over, needed to win. I tell you what, I'm good. I'm glad my maths is great, so I can work out that run rate. But here we have the bowling card, Vivian Ingenbrecht. He was outstanding. His first over, just going for one run. He got a little bit of step in a second over but then for the rest of it look at that double figures and Dwayne Abel he can hold his head up high as he only went for 19 getting a wicket as well and the lone wicket it was to four but they have got it all to do they haven't got a win yet in this tournament so there's only one way to play this they've got to try and go out big as we see the game to follow this one will be the Premier League champions Ronda Boss Cricket Club sponsored by Winfair 247 They'll be up against Milton Cricket Club, sponsored by Lord's Exchange. And I said, James, I'm, 
really interested to see this because what I've heard, Brandenburg Cricket Club, they're coming with their big guns. Yeah, we're looking forward to that game later on. And Ronda Bosch getting to that 70 total they needed to get the other day in 3.2 overs. So if they didn't bring their big guns then, they got them now. What are we looking at? Uh, can't wait, James. Can't wait. As we're going to take you through the sights and sounds here at Cape Town. And we'll join us here later for the second half of this match.
And welcome back here to the Golf Ticket Presents Cape Town Club Cricket League T10. Keep busy with match 10 here between Northern's Goodwood Cricket Club, sponsored by TARS 777. They up against Durbanville Cricket Club, sponsored by World 777. We had an unbelievable first innings there by Durbanville Cricket Club. But earlier, we saw the interview of Manny Segers, the coach of Durbanville Cricket Club. And we also spoke to Jason the coach slash chairman there of Northern Scooter and let's see what he had to say earlier to us. You're going to get Jason now. Jason, he's the chairman slash coach slash barman slash everything there at Northern Scooter. <laughs> uh, Jason, you boys haven't really got going yet in this competition. You find yourselves bottom of the table. However, there's still a lot of cricket to be played and you can still manage your way up into that playoff position. Yes, for sure, but... Uh yeah, we we had both games and we threw it away ourselves. So we only got ourselves to blame. It's our, it's our batting that let us down a bit because as the guys are premeditating and, and not assessing uh, conditions, as, as Manny said, and that's been our, but our bowling's been our strong side. So we've been doing well with the ball. So we just put it all together. Yeah, you guys have competed well, just losing out in the Super over the first time. And that's the nature of this D10 competition. Can go either way, can't it? Yes, yes, 100%. Uh, just, you just need one or two players to come off, and it's a different ball game. So this is the, the nature of the competition. And, yeah, if, if someone comes off, they, they win you the game. That's what it is. You said one or two players. Like, who are the players that potentially could come off for you? It's anybody's game, especially in T10. It's like, it's, it might be that person's day. Who do you think and who can you see maybe going progressing in this format? Yeah, we, we need a, a batsman up front to, to bat through. We, we've had very... Um, Shaky starts up front, so we need someone to, to hold the bat up front, and that's why we, we're going with T-Bag up front to, to, to um, uh, stabilize the innings for us and bat through, and Van and Moorman's there. We've got a few big hitters coming in later that, that, that can, uh, can go, but we, we need a good start up front and batting through. You got, uh, we spoke about Yaku Castle, the evergreen man for Durbanville Cricket Club. You have got Van der Moorman. He's also part of that Victoria South Africa over 40s team as well. So you've got a, a lot of experience in that camp as well. Yes, 100%. That's why we got Van in at three to bat, bat around the youngsters and just rotate. And yeah, you know Van Van can, if you, uh, he'll bat through and he'll give you a good knock. So the experience, you can see the experience a mile away on, on with the bat in hand. So yeah. Listen, Jason, go well today, and not just today, for the rest of the tournament. Oh, good. Thanks. Those are the view of the coaches. Join us for the action to come. And that was the view of Jason. I said the chairman there of Northern's Goodwood. And I'm still joined here by James. And James, just give us your little insight as to that first 10 overs. Uh, it started quite well there for the team in yellow. Northern Scooter had only conceding one run off the first over. Well bowled there by Vivian Engelbrecht. But it seemed after that, it was just pedal down as hard as you can. And Durbanville just sort of battered and bashed their way to 120. Yeah, well, as your, the coach said for Durbanville before the match, they were going to have a look at the conditions. They have a big, strong batting lineup. They wanted to bat first, wanted to make a statement out there, and they certainly did that. So I think from that point of view, they played it to the game plan that they originally put out there. Yeah, as we look at that points table, and they are firmly on top of that log at the minute. This game's still not done, but they certainly put themselves in a really good position there. And we see Northern's good at second from bottom there. They've got it all to do to try and get points on the board, which they certainly should try and do. As we see the huddle there of... Durbanville Cricket Club, the Orange Machine, sponsored by World 777. They're certainly going to be up for this as well. It's been a simply magnificent first inning. Some good hitting. And we've only got through three, three of their batters, and there were still loads to come, let me tell you. Yeah, they really look like they're going to be right up there at the end of the tournament as well. No, only three games. Uh, this one after this one will be gone. But already making a statement in terms of saying, we're going to be there for the playoffs. We're here based at home. We want to make this happen. We want to win this tournament. No, that's certainly the key as well. They're the home team. They're now conditioned played. And certainly they wanted to set the, the tone here by batting first. I know they lost a toss, but they were going to do that anyway. 
So as the umpires make their way, sponsored by ID247, Renshia Pretorius on the left, Ivan de Jong on the right. Ivan still walking a little bit gingerly of what happened to him a couple of days ago. It was certainly uh, not one of the most nicest things he wanted to see, but that's the Tasha's <laughs> teabag, Ruben, Ruben Heimer. He's making his way. He's only had two matches, scored 15 runs. And with him, looks like it's going to be Pierre Seister to start proceedings here for them. He also just the two innings, 15 runs. Both their totals in the tournament been around the 70 level for Northern's Goodwood. So this will be a stretch for them so far. Yeah, this is going to require some good hitting, some mature hitting, some good thinking out there in terms of batting. So it's going to be Taswell Lucas to start us off. And what you get from this lad, he just bowls good areas, good lengths, and sort of nibbles the ball both ways as well. As we see Wolf 777 and Lords exchange there, sort of side by side with some of the spectators as well, making their way here. It's Easter Monday here in Cape Town. A lot cooler than what we had, and that's the crowd still enjoying what they're seeing here. Yeah, lovely bit of blue sky perhaps coming up overhead. A bit cloudier, I learned earlier. So the batting conditions should be even better for Northern's Goodwood now than they were for Durbanville earlier in the day. Yeah, we are now into the game now, and obviously the moisture has gone out. So we'll see how this new ball reacts to the surface. But Taswell, Lucas, he's certainly a good bowler. He's been really doing well in the leagues here as well, as he's running in now from the town end. Maybe, I sh maybe it's me putting a mockers on me. Bowls are wide. Don't all often see that from him. No one has significant movement both off the pitch and swing away. And certainly starting it wide when wider still. Good take there by the keeper. And who have we got there? Luther Smith. Uh, the keeping for them today. Durbanville. Again, wide outside the off stump. Again, the umpire just says that's okay. <sighs> Maybe that could have been gone. Why that could have been gone anyway? So the indifferent start here by Taswin. Smith had a little indifferent day the last time out behind the stumps. Yeah, he certainly wants to be a little bit better than what he was that day. Okay. This one is cut away now. They're going to come back and they get through for the single. Good running there. Didn't look like there was a single there, but the man is deep on that circle there, 30 meter circle. So just enough time to get through for the run. And that's going to be very important for them. Get those singles and twos going because boundaries, you never know, it might be at a premium. Yeah, it just has to be. Run rate over 12s. Just got to keep going because if you don't score as close to 12, that run that shoots up even by one or two runs. So it's going to bring Pierre Seist on strike. Again, why that's off some, but there was no foot movement whatsoever there. He probably left that in the toilet still. Yeah, just standing and trying to deliver and it just didn't work for him. Got to move across towards that ball and make the most of it. I'm not sure that one. That sort of stood tall. He wasn't sure what to do with it. Looked like he shaped to pull. Then he, uh, well, he got through for one anyway. Yeah, it was an interesting shot. Just guided it out into the cover region. Lucky to get away without getting caught there. So completely and probably not even two mines, but seven mines, I think, in that one. That's played down the third man. Oh, how's the running between the wickets? That's picked up by the 12th man, Ethan. 
Ethan Kotzer, he's on for the injured. Jean Stradom at the minute, struggling with a little bit of back. I think he swung himself and hurt his back there, so we let him off there a little bit. Jean Stradom, what a knock that is. That was sort of enlightening things here on a cold, cold morning. Well, certainly was keeping it hot here at Durbanville Cricket Club this morning. This time he tries to swing again. And I said that sometimes you just need to be a little bit smarter, think a little bit better about how you want to play it. Five runs conceded in that, the first over from Tashman Lu uh, Lucas. Yeah, so it doesn't help them. Every over you say that they're behind that run rate of 12 just makes it go up and up and up. So now they need 116 of 11 overs. Uh, sorry, of nine overs, 116, and that's not an easy uh, you want an job extra for them. Over? You want an extra over, James? You want to change this from T10 to T11? I'm adding on the overs after every over. <laughs> You, you want to just give them another over, have another go. But now into the attack is Jakob Castle, the evergreen Jakob Castle. The, from the victorious SA over 40s that won the World Cup here not so long ago. And I wonder what type of Jakob Castle we're going to get today. Will he be quiet or will he be outspoken? That's hit and that's good. Just got to keep the scoreboard going. It's got to be, that's a single. And that's what they just got to do. Can't afford any more dots. I didn't know Yako Castle to be quiet at all in the t in the uh, over what his World Cup. He certainly, even though it was a friendly tournament there in the main, he had always had a lot to say. Never stops. It's like a Duracell. Just keeps going. Again, just stands in just gets his hands through it that's yucca castle's figures there more concerned with the ones on the right hand side picked up two wickets of three overs bowled in this competition so far this one again just dab bottom edge and this has been good here by the orange brigade Dimville Cricket Club, sponsored by World 777. This really good start with this new ball and inside this power play. Yeah, and you were talking earlier on about being the the Duracell man, and he certainly got the colours for it here, that orange and black. And he certainly got that. Just looking at him, that's one for the over. Shows the umpire, and there's a the scorecard. And they certainly got to go some here. The men in yellow, Northern Goodwood Cricket Club, sponsored by Tar 777. Just below the scoreboard there, we saw Abel. That's Alex Abel, the father of Dwayne. A big sporting family here in Cape Town. That's up in there. Who's going to take it? It's that man Skidder underneath it, and he takes it as comfortable as you like. And that's the first wicket gone. And that goes to Yucca Castle as well as Durbanville Cricket Club. Yeah, he just didn't get any of that, did he? he? Goes top edge straight up in the air. And the man underneath it. Snow on it perhaps, but he takes it quite easily. Yeah, that is just a bound of pressure that was building up there. They needed to get something going for themselves, some momentum into this innings. He just couldn't get that right as Ezra Prinsloor. He makes his way now to the middle to join Tarsius T. Bag Robenheimer. And that is mounted to climb. This is his first match here. So can he make an impression? Well, I certainly want to. Looks like he's a strong man. Probably power has that power hitting that they're going to need to get that ball over the boundary. No boundaries yet in the innings. Going to have to really start heading out right from the ball one, Ezra Prinsloo. Yeah, he was spoken about there by Eric Osner at the toss as being a person that can hit boundaries. So hopefully that's what they need here. Lawrence Goodwood in pursuit of 121 for victory here over Durbanville Cricket Club. 
Yes. Right, just looking at that bat there that he's got in his hand. Needs a few more white cherries on there, I think, instead of the red ones. Just shows he hasn't had any more any white ball cricket. But he's certainly got a few red ones, so can he enlighten himself here? Can he shed some light here into the innings of Northern Skurud? Facing up to Yaku Castle. That's pulled away nicely. Pass square leg as the chase is on. It's going to be two runs. I'm not sure why they didn't make it three because I tell you what, that's a big boundary out there. Yeah, very well played by Ezra Princely. But it is at the moment great over there from Yako Castle. Just what you'd expect from the seasoned campaigner here for Durbanville Cricket Club. No, definitely. He knows his he knows his skills. He knows what he's trying to do with the ball. His two overs have been bold. Now, you're already talking about sort of pivotal points in this match. Maybe this could be that pivotal over because it's going to be the third over of the power play. And they've got to try and get a little bit of momentum into this innings. Yeah, already looking at over 13 to the over now to win it. Stefan Bruniger, he's a new man now. He's going to be entrusted with this third over for Durbanville Cricket Club. Tash as he's facing up. That's down the leg side. Good work there by the keeper, Smith. Moving smartly to his left, but Stefan starts with a wide. Yeah, been a bit of a trend, hasn't it? For them to be a bit wide first up don't want to concede too many of those saw that far too much in the northern's goodwood bowling attack earlier on an 11 ball over in fact from that man ashley green that's flicked away down to fine leg and that's going to be the first boundary for the northern's goodwood team much needed boundary there and that man is it Tertius Robenheimer getting that one for them he's going to want to score a lot more of those go again say if you go anywhere near straight here they're going to flick you to that shorter boundary being called through there by the batter there and they managed to get one yeah so prince look he's going to be on strike here good work there from ezra prince who you saw shoulder to shoulder with the bowler it's a bit of a mismatch <laughs> not sure about that tell you what if those two run at me i'll be running the other way if you will, then I will definitely be running the other way a lot quicker. <laughs> Did a rugby game there on Saturday, and I tell you what, they could form a good part of those two teams, I tell you. Uh, down the ground by Prinsler. He keeps the scoreboard ticking. Yeah, point you were making earlier, Eugene. If you can't get the boundary, get the one at least. Keep that ball board ticking along. Dot balls is doesn't help you in this format just got to keep it moving positively forward maybe get another boundary here would do them well down the ground is it going to beat the fielder it does beat the field and has gone all the way four runs and that's the second boundary in the over much better over this for northern's good cricket club it's time to get the feel for this pitch here is tertius robenheim and he just dived over the ball there, the fielder. No comment. You just focus on the next ball. Should have done a little bit better there. Bradley Peterson. Twenty for one. Busy with the third. Oh, that is sort of a bottom edge. And that's gonna conclude the power play. No, we've got one more left. Now I wanna give five ball overs here now. My apologies there. You want to take the balls away, and I want to add the overs. Uh, 
<laughs> doing well here. All in all, it's still a T10 game. All right, as we go here again, Stefan running away. That's carved away over point. Is this going to be the third boundary of the of the silver? Yes, indeed. And is that a little bit of a momentum shift here for Northern's good at Cricket Club? Oh, they'll be hoping so now. End of the over, the hit, I think it is. 97 they need to win of seven overs. So my calculation says that's just one short of 14 runs and over. Uh, it's really going to be tough for them, 14 and over. Oh, you, uh, James, I'm going to test you on that one. If you, that, is, that is good knowledge, that. But that over going for 15, that's what we talk about. And at the same time, Durbanville Cricket Club with 26 without loss. So, runs-wise, neck and neck. But we saw what was to come there with ball being hit to all parts of this ground. So, so far, it's a little bit of a horse race here, neck and neck. Nose to nose, tail to tail. Is it going to be like that all the way through? It's going to be Bradley Peterson to bowl here for Durbanville Cricket Club. A little bit of spin. Left arm spin. Go on, babes. Go on, babes. Taking it away from the right hand. Hits the pad and they're going to come through for a leg bite. <laughs> Certainly not going to give them any time. He just bowls it flat. Yeah, probably wise on this surface not to give them too much opportunity to get the idea of the length and knock it out the park. No! Tash is he's trying good, just to hit that, try to use his feet there, but sort of speared in sort of almost round arm into the feet there by bradley peterson they managed to get the down too long off it's just going to be the one so now early in this innings goes to bradley peterson conceding two runs of which one was a leg by what has ezra got in store for us here i think he's going to go big Oh, he tried to just clock that over Bradley. It's just going to be one again. Still got to be patient here. Just You can get over a 15 or more maybe from someone else. Take what's on offer here. Don't lose any wickets. That's why ball speared into that. Into the feet. Re really good bowling here. As I said, it looks like it's almost round arm stuff here from Bradley Peterson. He doesn't want to give them anything to hit, does he? And that's sort of squeezed in and gets an inside edge. One run, and again, this has been a super over. Just the three off it so far, I think. Or is it well, four in the end? That concludes the over. Yeah, just the end of the fourth now. Just looking at what that score might be, but they're certainly up around the 15 runs per over required. Yeah, just we'll get the figures right there on there. Scores moved on to 28 for one after four overs. So we'll get that up and running for you as soon as we can. A 28 for one, that means they've got to get in the 93 in six overs. Well over 15. It's about 15 and a half and over they got a score from here. And that's huge. Oh, I'll be gladly saying every over is huge if they can ma muster up 15 and over from here on in. This will be the final over before that. Golf ticket, strategic timeout. Time for them just to regroup and get their thoughts together. That's uh, Leroux, it's Leon Leroux bowling. Leon Leroux bowling. No, it's not Leon Leroux. Forget what I said. Yes, it is Leon Leroux. Leon Leroux is the new bowler here. 
for the Orange Brigade, Durbanville Cricket Club, sponsored by World 777. He's entrusted with this over. I think they're going to need more than singles, James. This is not going to cut it for them. They need somebody to take this game by the scrap of the neck. They got through for two, but they're going to need boundaries. Well, a strategic timeout. Not going to come at it. It's going to come too late, maybe, for them because they need to be going for it right from the start of every over. They've got the wickets in hand now, Eugene. Only one down. Somebody's got to take it on. Short ball pulled away. Has it gone? It's gone for one box four. He's had the impetus needed. They need to keep going here. And he's Tash is the man. Teabag, Robbenheimer. Is he the man to try and get them a little bit on the move on here? They need to get a lot more boundaries as we see that equation at the bottom. It doesn't look good for them, but they have to keep going. You've got to get this ball over that boundary at least now twice, maybe three times and over. And it uh, reminds me of a song there. Because they need to go once, twice, three times and over. Smith just again fumbling that, but no harm done. Heard the cry from the batter there. He missed out there, he feels. Yeah, he definitely did because fine leg was up in the ring and that ball was fairly straight. Ramsh uh, certainly is on offer here for him. Hasn't made the most of this over so far. What can he do with this one? Picked up again. Has gone to deep mid-wicket. It's just going to be the one. Uh, just got to keep going here. Ezra on strike here. He's got to try and muster up another boundary and to take that into them with the strategic timeout sponsored by golf ticket again square to pass square leg gone there for one here comes a throw in Ezra makes it back there for two and that's going to conclude five overs here as we head into the golf ticket strategic timeout and for that period we're going to hand you over to PM Thank you, huge. Yari hai. Gulf ticket dwara sponsored drinks cart for the Gulf ticket strategic timeout. Fully regulated, authorized, and registered raffle draw from UAE. Apni kismat azmai with gulfticket.com. Unleash your chance to win millions with Gulf ticket, the UAE's premier online raffle draw. Experience the thrill of life-changing possibilities and become the lucky winner to draw huge amounts with Gulf Ticket. Register kariye gulfticket.com pe aur khelie kismat ka khel. Sabse zada bharose mand raffle draw UAE ka. Karodo kamaye aur apne sapno ko pura kariye gulfticket.com pe. Ye hai UAE ka sabse premier raffle draw जो कि है गल्फ टिकट आप अपना अकाउंट गल्फ टिकट डॉट कॉम पे बना सकते हैं और गल्फ टिकट ने ये स्ट्रेटेजिक टाइम आउट को स्पॉन्सर किया है गल्फ टिकट डॉट कॉम द्वारा ये ड्रिंक्स कार्ट आई है ग्राउंड पे गल्फ टिकट डॉट कॉम पे आप रजिस्टर करिए और अपनी किस्मत को आजमाइए सबसे ज्यादा भरोसेमंद राफेल ड्रॉ है ये यूई का फुली रेगुलेटेड फुली ऑथराइज एंड एब्सोल्युटली रजिस्टर्ड राफेल ड्रॉ फ्रॉम यूई आप देख सकते हैं कि केवल 10 सेकंड अब बचे हैं स्ट्रेटेजिक टाइम आउट के लिए और ये ड्रिंक्स कार्ट 
ग्राउंड से अब वापस जाते हुए सो ये था गल्फ टिकट स्ट्रेटेजिक टाइम आउट और छठे ओवर की तरफ हम बढ़ते हुए डोबनविल क्रिकेट क्लब बोलिंग पे अपना फील्डिंग पे अपनी पोजीशंस ले रहा है अगला गेम देखिए रॉन्डे बॉश क्रिकेट क्लब का वर्सेस मिलनटन क्रिकेट क्लब जिसको कि लॉर्ज एक्सचेंज ने स्पॉन्सर किया है और आरसीसी को विनफे 247 ने स्पॉन्सर किया है कुछ ही देर में यहीं पे ये मैच की शुरुआत होगी पांच बजे भारतीय टाइम के मुताबिक साढ़े बजे यू टाइम के मुताबिक और डेढ़ बजे साउथ अफ्रीकन टाइम के मुताबिक Thanks there to PM. It's great having them here, all supporting this golf ticket. Presents Cape Town Club Cricket League T10 match between Northern Scudder Cricket Club, sponsored by Tars 777. They up against Durbanville Cricket Club, sponsored by World 777. And certainly, James, Northern Scudder got out all to do here in the remaining five overs. Well, it would have been nice to win a fly on the wall there. Maybe on the golf cart there, the golf ticket golf cart, where we can listen to what's been said by the Northern's Goodwood batters and the coaches. What are we going to do? How are we going to attack all this? Because we've got got 84 to win this game in only five overs. That's a massive task. Just under 17 in an over. Yes, Satman Skitter. He's the new bowler here. Eddie Skitt is the man. Starts with a dot. Again, full. The execution have been excellent. Devonville Cricket Club really bowling well. The spinners really doing the buzz. Now it's the chance of Eddie Skitt to the left arm spinner as well. He's bowling to Tarsius, Teabag, Robenheimer. That's a full toss. That's being, I would say, clothed down to long on. No, that's that time. It's Bradley Peterson. wasn't wasn't great there from the man from SA Defence. Certainly not showing the great defensive work with his hands there, but keeping it down to two. Well, he does look like he's got a gun throw though. <laughs> yeah! That's a big appeal. I'm not sure it was an appeal. It was more like a a help. For Just stick him on par. On par. Ivan De Jong says that. Ah, I want four for that trick. That seems like it's going down the leg side. Yeah, he's going down the leg side all day. That one. Number 13 on his back. Again, well bowled. They're eh? going to try and muster a single. They get a single. Tell you what, our umpires are sponsored by ID two four seven. They just got a stick in the game here. It's Eddie Moore's first game out yet. Straight to Jakob Kassel, extra cover. It wasn't Eddie Moore, it was Eddie Skutter. Too many. As that's another over that's brought to a conclusion. Now just the four remaining, and they need. 81 to win of four overs. Now that's over 20 and over, Eugene. Well, we're in for a humding here. If that's what it's going to have to do. They've got to go and try and swing hard here. 20 and over. I think they'll try and just lull the Durbanville team into a false sense of security here. Northern's Goodwood. James. <laughs> James, it's uh, the time has gone now. 25 to 12. We up a long, long time as we see some of the crowd enjoying this here, this action on a cool morning. Yaku Castle back in the attack, and straight away he bowls it wide out to the off stump. This is a man with full experience, knows what he's trying to do, forcing them to hit them through the longer boundary that we have here on show today. Well, you were talking about that earlier, Eugene. Tactics so important, on-field management so important. Another dot, and see, this is the difference that experience brings you. Yaku Duracell Castle, we're gonna call him. I'm gonna get rid of the Evergreen. Let's call him Duracell, because that Duracell battery just keeps on going. 
That's taken quite smartly by the captain, Ruben Senecal. And that's the end of Tashis. He has to go now. And that's the end of the second wicket. Northern School of 42. Another great delivery outside the off stand, swinging away as we know Kozov can do. And that's a great catch above his head by the captain. You called it, Eugene. And they had to play that way, didn't they? Had to go for it outside that off stump. But you can sort of preempt it a little bit. As you see in the figures of Yaku Castle, this is before this match took place today. You can preempt it, and you can see, right, if he's going to go there, why not start over on the off stump a little bit? You know, we even go outside that. Okay, try and get it, try and to, to get it to where you want it to go. And if you know where the bowler is looking to do it, I mean, you can sort of preempt it a little bit as Vivian Engelbrecht, he makes his way. He had a good knock the last time out here for Northern Scooter, and they're going to need that and plenty more. They are indeed. I mean, he's going to have to go from 4 1. I mean, needing probably four boundaries and over if they're going to get over the line here from now onwards. It's gonna, they're going to need some effort here, yeah, and it's not easy to hit Yaku Castle. He's got two dots and a wicket that adds up to three balls that they haven't scored off and lost the wicket huge task here for these batters you just sense that that 120 anyway was going to be too much for them to chase it's almost up to about four runs a ball here yeah it's exactly what it looks like i mean they need what 20 and over it is That's hit by Vivian Engelbrecht. That's firmly hit. Fielding is excellently done. It's only going to be one, though. Leon LaRue down there. The man that shirt needs painted on. Excellent bit of ground being made. Well appreciated by the crowd as well. Oh, well, they should. Brilliant bowling, brilliant fielding. Durbanville, they say the... Orange Brigade just making this work out here. Uh, Yaku sends his fine leg back, so maybe it's going to be a short ball here. He could have still kept his square leg out, one feels. Let's see. Uh, it's a double bluff. The double bluff. He's gone, the double bluff. This over has gone for one run and got a wicket. Incredible stuff from Yaku Castle. Just what you'd expect from this man. You say the Duracell man, he's just keeping it going and going and going. Bowls him. That's the experience you talk about. That is Yaku, the Duracell castle again. Castling someone. That's the end of Ezra. He's gone. Beautiful delivery. Angles it in towards the middle and leg, and then it just moves away from him. And it lies lit up, targeting that leg side. And you can't blame him. This time of the match, he's got to go for it. Oh, they certainly have. They've got to try and do as best they can. Smash it to all parts. That ball, interesting, that one. <laughs> he even brings out a little bit of a way swing. That ball had a little bit of a way swing on it. Started very straight and then just straightened and hit the pegs. As Ryan Capes makes his way now to the middle. Yeah, they've got it all to do here. They have Vivian Engelbrecht, Ryan Capes. Are they going to be able to get anywhere near to that score? 41 at the moment and they're just nowhere near it. Only thing, the interesting thing for me is going to be that net run rate issue again. They've already got such a healthy net run rate. Devonville Cricket Club, the way they're going about their business here, yeah, it's just going to be extended, one feels. Firmly rooting themselves to the top of the log. Is there someone that can maybe do a Herschel Gibbs and hit six sixes? That's the only way they're going to get back in here. But dot ball. I say Herschel Gibbs. I should also say Yuvraj Singh, who hit Stuart Broad. Stuart Broad in Durban for six sixes. That was some unbelievable hitting that day. That's Vivian Ingram, but hitting that through the offside. He's running the first one hard and turns blind. 
turns blind. There's a big appeal. Are we going to have the third umpire? I think, yes, we are. We're going to go and see if he's made his ground or not. Everything happened a little bit slow there. It was like everything just was in slow motion. did seem like it, and we'll see if the slow motion replay can help umpire Wilma Jones here to give us the decision. And she's having a look right now and seeing what uh, might have happened here. And was it in fact out or not? Oh, his foot is in the way. It was great work by Smut, but this is going to require some good eyesight. It's going to be a really tight one, this, for the third umpire. And it looks to me like We'll see what the decision is. We're all waiting and very, very interesting here. Is that bail up in the air before that bat goes over the line? We're just looking at this replay decision pending. Umpire Wilma Jones about to make the decision. She's looking, she's looking. Can she see what's going on? And uh, it's given not our benefit of the doubt going to the batter, which is the decision that has to be made there. Just the angle is very difficult for the umpire to see. And she gives the decision, which you have to say, under the circumstances, looking at those replays, the right decision made by the umpire there. As I said, the <laughs> Smith's foot just seemed to have blocked off where the bat was. So, benefit the dart going towards the batter. And then he, the next ball just gets him out anyway. So, no harm done. Everybody gets what they wanted. That's another wicket gone there. Yeah, it's another beautiful delivery on the line of middle and leg. And it just straightens and goes and hits it beautifully. Middle and leg, and Vivian's got to go. Vivian Engelbrecht, successful in the last match with his batting, and unfortunately has to make his way. The new batter comes the crease, Jordan Bowers. Yeah, Jordy opened the batting in the last outing. He's coming down the order here. And it's just for him just to go out there and try and have a little bit of fun, because I think, as we see, his figures here with bat. He got, it, he got some runs, but I think... What you can do is start taking that keys out of your pocket and start that car because I think this one is well and truly in Durbanville Cricket Club's hands. Yeah, this one they're going to need like 12 sixes off the last two overs to win this one now. 78 needed to win off, what is it, three, uh, two overs and three balls. 78 needed. How's your singing, James? Well, uh, yeah, no, not too bad. Not okay. too bad. Yeah. Uh, well, you might as well start loosening your vocal cords because we think this one has done and dusted. <laughs> I think so. How is that? How is that? Not sure what uh, Bradley Peterson running through there. The last person to see it who appealed like that got his got fined. Can't just run down. You got to turn around and ask politely for the umpire how do you think that was umpire you can't just run down like this where, where do you think you are mate gotta ask turn around and ask the question politely maybe they'll consider it he goes point to that umpire standing on the scaffolding at the back there you know uh, i'm not sure <laughs> it's well bowled again by bradley oh oh we this time it's given oh, it's given this time it's given straight away and that's a run out Ryan Capes, he's run out. And again, things just keep going from bad to even worse here. Yeah, let's look at this again. And he just angles it down to that short third. And Ryan Capes coming through. And he's gone all love and money that time. Brilliant throw in from the man at short third. And now, new batter coming to the crease. It's a parade at the moment certainly a parade and it's a procession that they didn't want as a 
is Keenan Nokia making his way now to the middle. And this has definitely been another walk in the park for Durbanville Cricket Club. Can anyone stop the onslaught that is this Orange Brigade? Durbanville Cricket Club sponsored by World 777. And looks like in this tournament they got the world at their feet here, Durbanville Cricket Club. Yeah, they certainly have that. Again, we're only getting through three of their batters today. And the most impressive thing, again, have been their bowling. It's just the experience they have. They just the know-how. They just know what to do and how to go about executing their skills. It's been far and far the better on show from all the teams we've seen thus far in this tournament. Yeah, they've been in outstanding Durbanville. And that time wraps on his pads and again it's gonna be a dot ball. And that concludes another over. What an over it was. I mean that run out chance initially, then the wicket, then yet another run out. All action for the bowling team only in that over. Two overs to go, twelve balls. It's going to be Tasman Lucas to bowl. That's the ninth over again. We always say that the ninth over is very important. But I think he can go and have a nice time bowling this six balls because this one is done for the record books, we feel. Yako Kossel there. Three for six in two overs, Eugene. I mean, in a ten-over game, can't get any better than that, surely. Uh, well, he will tell you you can. I can tell you that. The minute you tell him that, he said, ah, oh, maybe it should have been a little bit more. But there's the scorecard, 43 for five. That squared it over point. Work to be done by Skirter. Ah, an excellent work done by Skirter. Oh, and what a throw by it. Keeps it down to two, and they're still doing the buzz out there. This game is done and dusted, but they still don't want to give any runs away. Uh, they're still, they know the game's in the bag, and they're still going for everything out there in the field. Fantastic stuff from this Durbanville team. It's good to having a good look at why we stopped that one. I think he gave himself a, a 7 out of 10 for diving there. Excellent work by the big man. Oh, this is just what you get from him. Just hits a line, hits a length, but a nip in the air both ways off the seam. That was another absolute beauty there from him. And you look at the scoreboard there, and you just got to say, domination, complete and utter domination from Durbanville. Sort of a little bit short and banged away. By no kid, just for one down to long on. And for me, this has been the difference between the two teams, both both bat and ball. Just the way they executed their skills, their application, their match awareness, where to go, where, which areas to attack. And they've certainly executed them pretty well indeed. That's hit down the ground, straight to long off. And that's another one that perishes. That's the end of Jordan. He goes for one. Yeah, looking at it again, in that channel outside the off stump, he has to go for it, the young man, and he plays it straight down the throat of the man running in from the long off. And that's another wicket gone, six down now. Looks like that Looks like Northern's good at Cricket Club are going to have the unwanted score of having the lowest score in this tournament so far. Yes, it is the inaugural one. As Dwayne Abel, he makes his way to the crease now. This has certainly been a procession. Quite something here from Durbanville Cricket Club playing at home. The Orange Brigade here have been dominant. 
just completely in every aspect of the game. Tactics, batting, bowling, fielding, just been on top of the game all the time. Northern's Goodwood having no answer today. No, and that is exactly it. I think, I know Manny said there wasn't much time for planning or anything like that, but as we see, the sponsors of the going around golf ticket, that's our type of sponsor. I think just the way they went about it and the execution, they can sort of be very happy about that. Golf ticket. That's Winfair 247. They are sponsoring the next team on show here. That's going to be Rondebosch Cricket Club. But yeah, just the way they've gone about their business and that experience really tells. As we look at that, that scorecard, or that scoreboard, 45 runs. James, nowhere near enough in a T10 game. No, it's been under the cosh from ball one in their innings. That's Lord's exchange there. Or well, just looking at golf ticket one there, it says millions of smiles. I think there's always millions of smiles and more to come here from Durbanville Cricket Club. MG Lion on the board there as well. Yeah, and they're sponsoring the Tigers of Tiger Valley Cricket Club. MG Lion got the Cats theme going there really well. Well, they'll be back up and running here. Dwayne Abel, he's going to be facing up. Oh, the old back and way there. Just plays it down. Scutter again with the arm. This time manages to get it on the second bounce in. Want to see that on the first bounce. Yeah, it's now regarded as what the Makatai and Teeny glide after the 4-3-8 game. Got to go there, don't you, James? Got to go there. The anniversary wasn't so long ago. Big mate of mine, Roger Taylor Marcus, still speaks of his 12 runs he scored that game. Again, looking to go across the line there. Another dot, and that's another over concluded. And we're down to six balls to go. And what I'm going to ask you, James, is just your view on maybe, as we see, Billy 777, another sponsor there next to Cricada on the right. On your view as possibly what teams might be thinking now about batting first, bowling first. You know, most of the teams that have won it, actually every team that has won it has bowled first. Well, up until this point in time, I think... Just looking at the conditions now, the pitch really good for batting. If we can see, if you've got a good batting lineup, you've got your tactics sorted out, you understand your strengths. We were talking about it, but it's this a bit earlier on. Play to your strengths, and, and certainly Durbanville today, wanting to bat, wanting to put the runs on the board, and it's worked for them. Yes, Skidder, he comes in and he's going to bowl that final over. Just managed to cloth that back to him as Abel. That's a dot ball, and I think even if you do lose a toss and you bat first, I don't, I don't think you should feel deeply aggrieved. I think if you bat a little bit smart and can get up to a total around the 100, 110, you're certainly in the game or maybe ahead of it as well. Scoreboard pressure certainly plays a part. Oh, that's sort of inside edge again, it's just for one. Yeah, scoreboard pressure plays a massive part here. So you've got the runs on the board, especially if you've got around that 100 mark. We've seen 69 being defended here. So you've got the runs on the board, put the guys under pressure early on, can happen. Getting a ball, getting the bottom edge, and they've just simply been outstanding. Durbanville Cricket Club, three balls to go. Forty-eight for six. It's time for the reverse. That's far in the gap. Ball's going to the boundary, is it? It's gone to the boundary, and that four brings up the fifty. 
for Northern's Gurud Cricket Club. Uh, one milestone that they would have hoped they would have got to a lot earlier in this innings, maybe after five overs. And this stage, no chance at all at maybe just trying to redeem themselves and get some pride there. Yeah, 100%. They needed to be early on in the piece. But this is going to be the final. Well, two balls left. Apologies to come. That's a no ball. It's criminal that a spinner ball is a no ball. So we're going to have a free hit here. And it's going to be Dwayne Abel and Easy Abel to clear the boundary. Yeah, can he cane this one enough to get it over the boundary? Let's see. I'll tell you what, if he does, he's going to bump himself up the order next time. Oh, he's bowled him, but that's not going to count because it's a free hit. Yeah, having a full go at that one, which is absolutely the right thing to do off the free hit. And you see, just angling it in beautifully into the right hand. Uh, he's not able to make any contact at all. And there we go. One ball to come in this contest. Hit on the pad, and this time Ivan de Jong, he raises a finger, and that's another wicket. And that is as comprehensive of a victory you'll ever wish to see in the T10 competition here between these two teams. And that's victory goes to Durbanville Cricket Club, sponsored by World 777, victorious over Northern's Goodwood Cricket Club, sponsored by Taz 777. Your view, James, on that performance. Well, I think you said it, Eugene, comprehensive. It was a slaughter. Wasn't even a contest out there, was it? And the 120 put on the board and you've, then you're getting your opposition, 54. I mean, that just tells it all. And Durbanville Cricket Club consolidating their position at the top of this golf ticket presents uh, Cape Town Club Cricket League T10. Your view, Eugene. Well, that batting card sums it all up. Tash is Robin. I'm the only one to get double figures for the rest of it. It's all telephone numbers, as you can see there. Single digits all the way down. No one really get going. And that's what you need if you ever want to get close to a total of 121. They were never really in the contest. And one feel even at that halfway stage, they were under the pump, really. Let's look at those bowling figures. Men are plenty with experience. Lucas going for four and over. Yaku Castle going for three and over. Bradley Peterson going for two and a half and over. You're not going to win many games if bowlers are going to bowl like that with that economy rate. And again, they just show the experience they had. They, they used six bowlers. And I tell you what, they still have more in the tank as well. And uh, the upcoming match then is a Rondebosch Cricket Club sponsored by Winfair 2470 against Milnerton Cricket Club, sponsored by Laws Exchange. That match coming up at 1.30 p.m. South African Standard Time, 3.30 p.m. UAE Time, and 5 p.m. Indian Standard Time. And uh, that should be a fascinating contest. As Eugene was saying earlier, Rondebosch Cricket Club bringing out the big guns here for today, and Milnerton also in with a chance of getting into that good position in the top half of the log. And it won't be long now before we've on that game. Just an hour and a half away, the toss at 1 p.m. But uh, soon what we're going to be having is Eugene Molion with the two captains of the teams just to give the post-match uh, presentation and... Uh, review and Eugene will be calling on the captains now to come up and uh, chat to him. And welcome back here to the Golf Ticket Presents Cape Town Club Cricket T10 and it was a very one-sided match at the end of the day between Northern Scooter Cricket Club sponsored by Taz 777. They were up against Durbanville Cricket Club, sponsored by World 777. Durbanville Cricket Club, they come victorious again. So I'm going to ask Eric to come forward and just have a, a few words with me. Eric, 
was a mammoth task ahead of you going trying to get it over 12 and over you haven't reached double figures yet so you thought maybe you were trying to be positive but it was just a stretch too far um, yes, uh, playing against a side like Turnbull, they're an excellent team. Um, I think this was a big learning curve for some of the boys to realise we're not actually at that level. So it's just doing the hard yards coming back next season. So it's actually true reflection of our club depth as well. Um, we played with a lot of our second and third team players against a proper outfit. So, um, yeah, big learning curve for us, but a great job from Turnbull. Yeah, you talk about the learnings that you can take place. Some of your bowling skills or, or execution, probably you just need to a little sort of alter that and hopefully that can change in the matches to come. Yes, definitely. I think there's a few tweaks that we can think about. Um, if we looked at Dernville's performance, especially with the ball, they had a set plan, set fielding, and they didn't deviate from it. They just kept things simple. So it's another thing that we learned today. It's very difficult with the amount of players you have unavailable as well, giving opportunities to other to others coming in, but hopefully they can get some experience out of this. Um, yes, 100%. Like I said, we had some of our um, th third side players that were playing. Um, I think it's just a learning curve for all of us. So, yeah, to go forward. Listen, all the best for the remaining of this tournament. Thank you, Eugene. I'm going to call on Ruben Sienekal. He is the victorious captain. Ruben, you said at the toss you didn't mind batting first. I think that's what you wanted to do, just trying to get your team maybe it's doing something different. My, oh my, did you guys exploit that quite well today? Yeah, I mean, a good team isn't a good team if you're only good when it's easy. So you need a few players to stick their hand up and get the team out of trouble when it's difficult. I mean, the pitch wasn't playing easy yeah. this morning. We were batting quite slow for the first few hours and we got to a very respectable 120. So that's what good, if players are sticking their hands up when it's difficult, you know you've got a good side on your hands. So I'm very privileged to be captaining this team. Looking at that first power play, you guys only mustered up 26 in that first power play. I think teams will have to look at that and they might not have to go that hard in that first power play as how you go on beyond that. Mm, I think with this being such a new format for everyone, everyone's still learning. Um, there hasn't been many games played, um, not nearly as much as we've played T20 and 50 over cricket. So I think everybody will be analysing the power plays and the, how you should pace your innings as a team um, and see what the best strategy for them would be. I think looking at your batting, you've got a powerhouse batting to, uh, batting side, John Stratham. He got 50 again today. It seems like you guys just sort of flicking the coin to see who's going to get that one. But as your bowlers that I'm really interested about, Taswell Lucas, Yaku, uh, Yaku um, Castle as well, the Evergreen there, and Bradley Peterson. Guys going for under fours, maybe even fives and over. Yeah, no, look... Uh our batting lineup is very blessed as well. With the bowling lineup, we know we'll always back us up. So I think the guys bowled very well to the plans today, getting the people to hit. Um, with us playing on the far left strip, getting them to hit to the bigger boundary. Um, it worked very well, um, and I can't ask for more from my bowlers. You're going really well in the tournament. Hopefully you can keep this going. Thank you very much. Thank All you. the best, Ruben. That concludes the post-match presentation here with Durbanville Cricket Club, sponsored by World 777. They are victorious over Northern Skudud. Cricket Club. They were sponsored by Tars 777. Join us later again for another pulsating game.